What's up guys, it's Darius, and today I wanted to go over what's coming out of IGN's first on Destiny 2. In this video, I'll try to give snippets of clips for some of the really interesting stuff in it, but not too much just so as to not basically rip off IGN's footage. I'll leave links down below to the full video so you can watch them yourselves. So today was a focus on PvP in two subclasses. We'll dive into PvP first. More specifically, Destin Legary of Fireteam Chat had a sit down with Lars Bakken to talk about how control has been reworked in multiple ways. This has been done by having two capture points already been claimed at the beginning of each match by each team. In other words, when the match starts, point A will already be captured by Team Alpha and point C will already be captured by Team Bravo. This is done to make the start of each match have the biggest fight right off the bat at point B. The point system has also been changed so that now you earn one point per kill and that point will be multiplied by how many points your team has captured at that time. For example, if I kill someone and have two points captured, my team will receive two points for that kill. Matches last eight minutes, and the goal for points in order to win the match is 75. One other tidbit of detail is that the capture points do not require you to neutralize them anymore. If a point is captured by the enemy team, all you have to do is wait one capture cycle and the point is yours. Point capture speeds have also not been affected by the amount of people on a point anymore, and the flags have been made translucent to make them less annoying. That's all the news for control and how it's been changed. Personally, I think these are all really cool changes. We'll have to see if the point and speed capture changes that have been made are going to work out for the better once we actually try it out for ourselves, but honestly, any changes made to things we had in Destiny 1 are welcome in my opinion. We also got to look at the Endless Veil PvP map, which is on Nessus, and specifically meant for the game mode control. Now let's talk about subclasses. We finally got to see what the Titan Sentinel subclass is like, and it seems pretty simple and actually pretty familiar to those who have used the Sunbreaker Titan in Destiny 1. The super is a roaming super where you can melee by dashing forward with your shield to kill people, but you can also throw the shield for people at a greater distance. Pretty simple as I said before. This subclass can also cast the bubble like Defender Titan did in Destiny 1, however they did not show that in this gameplay. It also can hold up its shield to protect itself during battle, but they also did not show that in this gameplay as well. And of course, you can use the wall ability that's available across all Titan subclasses. Other than that, there wasn't too much new to see in the gameplay, except for the fact that the sweet business is pretty damn awesome and powerful in PvP when pre-fired, and it also seems like Bungie may have increased the speed of Titans because the beginning of this match shows the Sentinel Titan flying out of the spawn. It just seems like compared to the past footage of the Titan gameplay, this is one time when I noticed the Titan traveling at high speed. Or maybe it was just me, I don't know. Next up, let's talk about the Voidwalker for the Warlock. Now we've seen what the Voidwalker mainly consists of due to Destiny 1, and most of that seems to still be in Destiny 2's version of the subclass. We have Blank in what seems to be either Scatter Grenade or Axion Grenades returning but with just way more grenades that follow you. Of course we have the Warlock's third ability, Healing and Empowering Rift, and the Super, the Nova Bomb. However, one really cool thing I noticed when the Warlock casted Nova Bomb was that it now follows targets. Yeah, look at this shit. It seems the player has a perk on where it allows the Nova Bomb to be way bigger and slower, but follows the target, but also allows the Nova Bomb to go forward and literally turn the corner and pick up two kills. Honestly, that's so damn cool, and in Destiny 1, we did have a perk where it allowed the Nova Bomb to follow targets, but not to this extent. And it reminds me of the Spirit Bomb from Dragon Ball Z. So again, subtle changes, but we'll have to really see how the subclass feels when we get to use it ourselves. One last piece of news to go over to wrap up this video is that PlayStation has unveiled a special PS4 Pro bundle for Destiny 2. It's not as sexy as the Destiny 1 PS4 that released, but it's still cool to finally see the PS4 Pro in white. For those who are waiting for this news and wanted to pre-order it, you finally have it. And that's it for the news today in regards to Destiny 2. It personally got me even more excited for the beta, but let me know what you guys think of all this down below in the comments. Are you happy with all these changes made to control and the way the subclasses look on the fence or disappointed? If you enjoyed the video, a like would be appreciated as well as a sub and a click on the bell to never miss an upload by me on Destiny 2 and get notified as I do upload more news. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.